Hey guys, GT Nickel here, and today I am um, going to be doing a basic mountain bike video. I'm going to be doing some uh, maintenance repair uh, videos of um, basically mountain bikes and just goes transfers to mostly all bikes. The reason I'm showing this bike is because it's a little more complex than your average bike. So um, if I can fix basically one of these, then you can fix uh, any bike. Um, in my opinion, I think V-brakes are better than the, uh, the disc brakes that I have on this. The only reason I say that is because these are always maintenance, you're always working on them. And I'll show sort of a basic way of, of how, to, how to keep them working. And I'll show the flaws in it. And um, I'm going to be also showing basically the whole check over and oiling chain and checking tire pressure and whatnot. I am a certified bicycle mechanic. I took the course. I have a certificate here. Uh, where's there's the camera? So that's just a photocopy of it. But I um, just showing that you can actually go to school for this. Um, I went to the Sanctuary Foundation, which is a basically a, a college. This was a program uh, set up for mostly street people and people on welfare to try and get them back started into the street life. And I was working in a bicycle mechanics, or sorry, I was working in a bike shop. And I was doing sales, and I wanted to get into mechanics, so the guy uh, recommended that I took this course. So I bought my way in. I had a um, thousand dollar scholarship that I got through the Cadet Corps in uh, here in Canada. So they gave me a thousand dollars towards any uh, post secondary that I chose, and um, I used it for for uh, getting get, getting this certificate. So anyway, um, I'm going to go into basically what you're going to need. For your basic uh, maintenance is you're going to need a rag, you're going to need oil. Um, I'm actually not sure if i got any right here. I might have to get that when I need it. But I'll just quickly show my uh, my whole uh, bike setup kit. I've got Tri-Flow. It's a good cable cleaner. This is a chain cleaner. You don't need this, but it's a nice thing to have. I've actually never used it. Uh, I usually soak the chain in gasoline and uh, and then WD-40 it. That's to clean it. You um, mix that up. You can leave it overnight in vinegar, and then you just scrub it with a toothbrush. That gets your chain really clean. And then you um, you clean you basically wash it down with uh, soapy water, and then you dry it out. Make sure it's dry, and then apply oil. Never ever use WD-40 on your chain, and then go for a ride. You're going to wreck your gears, you're going to wreck your, your chain. WD-40 is not a lubricant, it's a water displacement. That's what WD stands for. It pushes water out, but it doesn't lubricate. It lubricates on short term, but long term, it's just not a, a good thing to have on your chain. Always use a lightweight oil if you're in uh, wet locations. If you're in real dry locations, uh, still a lightweight oil is probably the way to go, but um, some places a heavier oil might be required. Um, the other thing you want to check out is your tires. Make sure there's no cracks on the sidewalls. If your tires are white wall or gray wall, that's where you have a layer of a different color, not just black rubber. Really make sure you, you check on those because they like to start to fray and then you should change your tires. These tires are in pretty good condition. I've only ridden one season on them and then the bike's been sitting for three years. And I'm doing a, basically a tune-up on it to, so I can go out ride again. My chain's in decent condition. It's a little dry. I'm going to give it a, a buff because there's some grit on it. And if I can find my oil, I'll give it an oil. This here is Tri-Flow. You shouldn't use it on your chain. It's um, good for cleaning out your cable housings and lubing up your cables. You should use um, Tri-Flow on those. Once again, never use WD-40 on your bike unless you're just cleaning. Um, it's not a good thing to have. You should have uh, seat post grease to be putting in in here. I've got a great seat post grease. This is going to be funny. It's from Russell Hayes. It's one of my local bike shops actually, so I got this bike from. Check this out. Russ Hayes. Um, it's called Preparation RH. Soothing ointment for bikes. <laughs> Just an inside bike joke. Um, we have crude senses of humor in the bike shop. Um, just goes with the territory. So um, it's sort of a punk scene there. So that's just often how it is, um, at least all the bike stores I've worked in. So 
I've got various ratchet sets. This this kit's basically so I can work on everything. It's um, not everything you're going to need, but I was a bike mechanic, so I've got everything except for a few tools which I can modify. I have a Truman stand that's actually up there. Um, this here is just a clamp. It's not really for the bike. What I do is I clamp this to a ceiling where I can, and then hang a rope with a loop in it, and then you can hang your seat post or your, your seat in that loop and then get your bike up off the ground. So if you want to work on it that way, it works well. It's just like a modified bike stand. Um, another great way that if you're out in the woods especially, or it doesn't even have to be in the woods, just outside riding and your bike breaks down, you need to fix it. Of course, you might see this quite often when someone's fixing a flat out on the street. Well, this goes for anything. Just flip your bike upside down. Just remember that when you're working on it, everything's a little in reverse because it's upside down. Um, I also have my bike shop that's on the seat right here. This right here is a bike shop. It's got a seat, um, sorry, a, a tube. Normally it's got a patch kit in it, but I used up my patches and I have to go out and get a new one. New ones. Um, so the patch kit isn't in there. Um, if you look up my video EDC, that's my everyday carry for bikes and hike, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see the contents of this. So I'm not going to go right into this. Um, but the chain breaker is always in here, that's so I can fix my chain. I've actually had a chain snap on me while riding, in fact, I think it's happened a few times, and that's why I always carry a chain breaker. Uh, you can always take a link out, put your ch thing back together, and that'll get you home. Just remember, don't go from extreme to extreme gears, you shouldn't do that anyway, but once you take a link out, definitely don't, because it's putting more strain on your chain, and you'll have to go out, buy a new chain. When you buy a new chain, you have to get new gears, and it gets quite expensive. You have to do the whole new, whole new drivetrain when you change out your drivetrain. Never just change gears, or sorry, never just change your cogs out and put new cogs in an old chain, and vice versa with a chain and old cogs. Uh, you're just going to have a lot more wear and tear, and um, your gearing is going to be really sloppy. You're going to have a lot of click, 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 click going on. You can adjust your derailleurs all you want. It's still going to rattle like a Kmart shopping cart. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all I can say. Um, I'll move this a little forward just so I can get some spinning on my wheels, get my briefcase out of here. So right now, because the bike's been sitting, the metals have moved on my brakes, my disc brakes, and you can hear it squealing. So I want to adjust them. That's really simple. The best thing to do is you need to find the Allen tools that fit. I've got my oil, so I can go over that too. So right, it's a little bit cluster fucked right now because um, I haven't opened this toolbox for a few years. I've been working on all my guns, and that's been occupying my time. And I'm just getting back into biking after three years. So here we are, with just a basic tune-up and check over. Just showing you sort of the tools. This is going to be a slightly lengthy video, but bear with me. And I'm going to have to adjust the front brakes, but when I do one brake, it stands for the other one. So it's going to be simple. Um, so uh, basically, you've got these two calipers in these disc brakes that are closing against the metal. And what you're going to want to do is there's a lockout screw that's in the top, because you need to back that off. These are Hayes sole disc brakes, to be exact. So um, this just goes for this model. And then there's these two Allen nuts on either side here. And you're going to play with your, your caliper sizes. And all you want to do is just back one off enough so it, it loosens off your, your clamp so they don't rub. Um, you don't want to back it off too much. Or what's going to happen is when you go to apply your brakes, you're not going to get that pressure you need to actually lock your wheel. So you'll end up uh, not, not stopping as efficiently. So. I'm trying to look down here. It looks like uh, I could probably loosen off both sides. I'm going to find my uh, Allen tools. I think I actually have to go to my gun case for a second. So I'll be right back in just one minute. This here is a chain, chain sizer. You use it to check the stretch on your chain. Now I know that my chain's not stretched because I just did my drivetrain. Um, before I put the bike in the storage, so it's all brand new. So there's no reason I should need to um, 
do anything with that. I'm just going to have to give it an oil. But I'm just going to get my... Uh, Another toolbox just right here. Throw that here because I've got only Allen tools in here. Here. In fact, here's my park tool uh, Allen keys right there. So I'm just going to drop these here. There's got metric and imperial because these are bikes. Normally they're um, they're Japanese because they're Sh Shimano, so they're uh, metric. Um, they, they aren't imperial, so that's something to keep in mind. I don't know about American bikes. I don't work on, or I shouldn't say I don't work on Mer bi American bikes. I just don't have that much exposure to them. Most of the bikes I work on are Norco and, and um, Raleigh, or not Raleigh, but I have worked on them. Normally just Norco and, um, and the uh, upper end bikes like GT and just Gary Turner and Gary Fisher and those ones. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I just uh, loosened up this one. This one, uh, the the um, opposite caliper here, and then just loosen that. Now, it's still squealing a little. Good. I'm just going to back this one off a tiny bit because it's still rubbing. There. Working a little bit better. That's the front brake. Right. Back brake. And that feels pretty good. And we're moving my. Uh, so when you do this, you have to make sure you're not moving your calipers. So when I apply it, what's happening right now is it's closing on the calipers, but one's moving in too much, the other one's not moving in enough. And it's actually torquing your metal disc over, and you don't want to do that. You want them to come down on the disc evenly so it doesn't pull your disc over. Um, these discs are slightly warped, so I have to have a slightly exaggerated um, opening for them. Uh, I did that riding down this basically cliff line, and I was applying a lot of brakes. My uh, brakes went red hot. They were actually sizzling when I, like, I spit and flick. I spit on them, and they go, pssst. <laughs> and they were actually black and almost glowing red. So they were really, um, really um, worn out. And I, uh, I scrubbed them down with steel wool, basically, and just kept using them because they're quite expensive. So I figured I'd ride them until they break. And um, they've done me well so far, but I, I won't be going down on the cliff like that again until I get the new br new discs. But anyway, that's good enough for now. So then you'll need to lock out this, um, this screw here. I had this screw already um, loosened out. That's why I didn't loosen it up first. Shit. Can't see it right now. There it is. So, there. Wrong side. So anyway, um, V-brakes are a lot easier to work on. Uh, they're just a cable that goes over and you set them up. And cantilever, same thing. They're a cable that goes over and then you have a center cable that pulls up. And they're any kind of rim brakes, in my opinion, they're just easier to work on, cheaper. Um, if you're a beginner rider and you're not sponsored and you don't want to have expensive maintenance, just go with uh, rim brakes. Stay away from these discs. Um, they're just a pain in the ass, in my opinion. Um, like, they're very effective. I can stop, like, with a pinky. I have a damaged left hand, so discs are good for me. Uh, I just It's just weak, um, but generally speaking, um, I, I like the... I used to always ride the, the, the rim brakes when I was riding professionally, because I was sponsoring myself, therefore I had to basically buy new wheels and new brakes on a regular basis, because I was always damaging them because of the aggressive riding I was doing. So it was just, um, yeah, I was um, always working on them, but because I'm out of that game now and I just ride le leisurely, uh, these brakes have actually done me pretty good despite the constant maintenance. So 
Anyway, the proper way to oil a chain, because we're going to get onto this now, is get on this side. All you need to do is you clean it by grabbing the rag around. In fact, I'm going to turn the bike around so you can see better. WD-40 on it, but if you have rim brakes, be very careful not to spray any WD-40 on your rims. You won't be able to stop. Keep oil off that too. Um, WD-40 is really bad for your tires, so try and definitely avoid getting WD-40 on the tires. They melt the sidewalls, and what will happen is you'll end up with cracks and, and uh, deformancies in your sidewall, and if you get WD-40 on them, you're going to have to keep applying the WD-40 to keep your your tire in the condition so try and not get on your tire or if you do you might have to replace your tire in, in a short period so just let you know that so all I'm doing is I'm just cleaning off the rag first of all is just by grabbing and I'll go backwards because it's just easier and you're just pinching it and I'm cleaning off the chain and then you go to your wheels on your pulleys on your derailleur. The derail oh, you might not know what a derailleur is. This whole contraption here is a derailleur. It helps lift your your chain up onto the gears. It's part of your gear shifting gear shifting part of the bike. So you want to clean these these guide pulleys on them. They're little usually plastic wheels, sometimes they're metal. And um, you sort of get all the grit and goop off them until the, you can see the teeth on them again. And then you want to check those over. If they're really badly chewed, you might need to go to the store and buy them. Um, when I was in the bike game, they're usually around $5 a piece. So they're not incredibly expensive. And if they're in good condition, they just work so much better. And then this bottom one, you're going to have to get from the opposite side. And when you run this one, try not to get the, um, the rag lost and caught up into the uh, the cog set, and if it does get caught up, just pedal backwards, and you can you can get it unhooked. And you want to get that one clean. And you can check the bearings inside; they're little bearings. You just take out that little screw, and then you can take out the uh, the wheel apart. And that wheel, um, there's these little caps. You take those out, and there's some bearings in there, and you can check them over. They'll usually last quite a long time. And what you can do is you can swap parts over. So if you have a few of these lying around. You can always take the bearings out of them and throw them in, into your new one. So that's a handy thing about them. Um, and then applying the oil, all you do is you just pedal backwards and you run a bead along the top of your bike. Just like so. And then now is where you pedal forward. And you cycle through your gears. You want to make sure you get up on all gears, which this bike should be perfectly tuned because I lent it to my friend and then I, um, I just tuned it up before I lent it to her, so we should be fine. And it looks like working just fine. Uh, rapid fire a little, little slower than other gear shifting. Uh, the grip shift are the fastest acting gears, only I just don't like them personally. I, I like the rapid fire. Um, just like the trigger, I guess. So, there we are, we're up on that one. Now with this one, I have three speeds in the front, but I've taken one out, put a bash ring in its place, so it's only two speeds. So we're gonna move the front one up, and that's as high as it goes, and then we move it back down. I sacrificed a gear to climb logs. That's just, and we stopped. So, now that I've applied a bunch of oil on it, I wanna get rid of the axis oil. So we're just going to run the rag over it through it again and just now just do it like this you want to watch your hand around the moving wheel you don't want to get your fingers or knuckles hit by the spokes get your finger caught in there you can lose it or break it so just something to really keep in mind um, yeah this is a machine so yeah be careful working around it and that's all you got to do and then I like just stop so that's that and of course, um, 
you know, just basic cleaning is always good. You want to keep your 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 bike clean. Um, what happens with uh, dirt is it collects moisture and it ends up eaten through, and you'll get rust spots. Um, it can eat through paint because it just scratches it over time. Things like that. Um, if you keep your bike cleaner, it just generally lasts longer. This bike's aluminum, so it won't rust. But anyway, I just like to keep a clean bike anyway, uh, at least somewhat clean. Uh, you can have some dirt around it, but definitely around your moving parts and your drivetrain, you want to keep that clean. Uh, it's just going to last a lot longer. Um, uh, your cables, you always check them over. You want to check slackness on them. If you can pull them out like this, what you need to do is you need to bottom out your gears. You drop them into the lowest gear where you have the most slack. And um, when you do that, in fact, I'm, I'm actually there. So I'm in the good tension. But if it, you can pull it out to here, you drop into your lowest gear, and then if you have weight, even more slack, either your cables need to be replaced, or what you do is you undo this bolt up here with your Allen key. You want to hold on to this and just pull it until it's somewhat tight. And then you back it off about a millimeter or so and then do her back up. And that's the first thing you do before you, you adjust your derailleurs. Um, I'm going to do a whole different video on derailleurs, things like that, because that gets into a lengthy thing just on its own. So, um, so yeah. And uh, check over your bike, check over the pedals, make sure the bearings aren't shot. Um, I find these Welgo pedals were the best. A bunch of the companies have stolen their design and they're just not making adequate stuff. You can spend, like these pedals were $100 just for the set and I haven't done much riding and the bearings are already starting to go on them. So I find uh, $30 is the most I'll ever spend on pedals again because I'm just not impressed. But anyway, these cranks are splined. Um, they're pretty hardcore. When you turn these, it should be smooth and, and you don't go forward in it because if you have a grinding gears, you're gonna, th you might think it's your your bottom bracket. What you do is you spin it backwards, and it should be smooth. If it's making any weird crunching noises, it's probably time to replace it. Some bottom brackets you can overhaul them. Uh, most bottom brackets are now cartridge brackets, so you have to take them out, put a new one in, and uh, that actually brings down the cost a bit. So it's not that bad of a thing. Normally the parts aren't that expensive. I find the wheels to be one of the more pricey things on a bicycle. So, yeah, that's that. Um, so we've gone over the drivetrain, the gears are good. The, um, the air pressure is actually good on this bike. You wanna squeeze the tires, and then if you need to add air, add air. You don't wanna go over the pressure that's told on the tire. Just same goes for a car. Um, I find for a mountain bike, generally speaking, 65 PSI is, is pretty good. Um, these ones are probably around 50 because I do a lot of mountain biking and it gives you a little bit more traction to have a slightly less tire, but you lose a lot of efficiency, of course, so th there is that trade-off. Um, fat tires uh, really drag you down, so it's good to have um, thinner tires. So anyway, that's uh, that part of this part of the video. I think I've gone far enough. I'm going to do a section two on it and we'll get into the rest of the maintenance.